Thank you for joining us for a special edition of this Frog for Life podcast. With TCU having its 150th anniversary this year, we decided to interview some of our most notable alums and hear about their stories through their TCU journey. We're here today with Melissa Austin Weeks here in her home, and she is going to take us through her journey through TCU. Melissa is an undergraduate uh, student from 1987 and also received her graduate degree in 2021, and she is here with us in her home with her dog, Hazel. So thank you for joining us today, Oh, Rob, I'm delighted to have you and the viewing audience with me today. This has been a real, a real honor to look forward to. Well, before we go into why you are one of TCU's most notable alumni, mm -hmm. let's talk to why you decided to come to TCU all those years ago. Well, I, well, I grew up in Fort Worth and went to school on the east side and knew that I loved TCU. I have a family history and family legacy with TCU. But at that point in my life, I felt like TCU was too close. So I, against my parents, um, against my parents, I guess they were just not happy about my decision. I went um, up north to University of North Texas and started my journey in special education. And I loved the sciences. And I also kind of started to develop an interest in wanting to do more with my career. Teaching is, is obviously an integral part of nursing, but I really wanted to do the hands-on patient care. So I told my mom, you were right. I should have gone to TCU. They have an outstanding nursing program. So she helped me um, with making the arrangements to meet with the dean and learn more about the TCU's nursing program. And then I was a transfer student. So I transferred in the fall of 1984 to TCU. And so you grew up around TCU and you had a different college experience prior to coming to TCU. How would you say the student experience at TCU measured up to maybe what you were expecting? That's a great question. Um, you know, first of all, I was a transfer student, mm -hmm. so it was a little harder to find my community um, because everyone else had had their freshman experience and all that goes into that frog clan, camp orientation. So my experience was a little bit different. And then I think if you add to that, that I was a nursing major, which the curriculum is very demanding, um, when, especially when you enter your clinicals, you're up when everyone is still asleep and it's dark outside and you're studying until late at night. Um, so my student experience in terms of activities, I was very involved in my sorority. I'm an Alpha Delta Pi. Mm -hmm. um, was limited to either my sorority or schoolwork because um, it was very demanding. And what led you to want to uh, choose nursing? You went from, you said, uh, education to now wanting to do nursing. What made that, what caused you to want to do that change? Well, I loved the sciences, um, especially I took anatomy and physiology, and I loved that class of how the body works. And the nursing program at TCU then and still, even 36 years later, and I can't believe I am saying I graduated from TCU 36 years ago, is has always been rated number one, or at least in the top five throughout the United States. I have just always had, um, I think God gave me the talent um, and the gift of being able to care for people and be empathetic. And that's one of the most important aspects of nursing is to really feel your patient's pain and to be intuitive. And I loved the fact that nursing also had the teaching component, which I went started as a special education major. So teaching was obviously very important to me. And that's probably one of the most important aspects of, a nurse, of being a nurse in the healthcare pro uh, profession is being able to teach your patients to take better care of themselves and um, apply what you've taught them so that they can lead stronger, healthier lives. And that was, that was really appealing to me. And so you got all the academic knowledge of t nursing at TCU, and then TCU says, here's your degree, it's time for you to leave the nest, go join the working profession. Yeah. What was that uh, postgraduate experience like for you? Very different than the, than the average nursing uh, major, I would say. And that's one of the things I love about the nursing degree is that you can do so many things with it. Um, 
I left, I worked for a year here um, in Fort Worth. At, at that, that time, it was called Fort Worth Children's, and it was, um, now it's Cook Children's. And I worked in the NICU program, NICU department. And then I moved to the East Coast and worked for the National Cancer Institute and did cancer research. Um, and Jimmy Carter's family was actually one of our, patient, our groups that we studied mm. with the incidence of cancer in his family. And then I had the wonderful opportunity to go work for Baltimore City Community College, an inner city um, school in Baltimore, and be the director of their student health center. So that's when I really learned that my skill set is going, on, going in and setting up a non-existed program and developing all of the systems for it. And we, I actually received a commendation from the mayor of Maryland at that time oh, wow. for my health care programming that I uh, provided for the students at our campus and loved that experience. I worked, as I said, it was inner city, so it was primarily, key, primarily um, African-American community mm -hmm. and teaching them um, the basics of health care and to try not to use the emergency room as their health care provider. Mm -hmm. So I really enjoyed that. Then it was time for me to move back home, and that's when I entered into my career working for TCU. I went to go work in the School of Nursing and worked there until I had my daughter, and wanted to work part-time, and then that's when I came over to work in alumni relations. Hmm. And so you, obviously working, you know, starting a program in Baltimore, being uh, accommodated by the mayor, um, as an outstanding accomplishment. Actually, it was the governor. The I governor. Think, yeah, it was governor. It was the governor. Of yeah, Maryland. yeah, it was the governor of of Maryland. Yeah, wow. yeah. He, um, you had to apply for it, um, but uh, you had to outline, you know, answer all of the questions, and you had to go for an interview. And so I met with his, he and his cabinet, and um, so I was, I was selected. Hmm. Yeah. And so it's one thing to be accommodated by the governor of Maryland. Yeah. Um, and everyone know all the special things you did there, but then you, as you said, you come work for your alma mater. What did that mean to you? What was that a special tug of the heartstrings to come back and work for the place that you had just graduated ten years prior? It really did. It was a kind of a surreal feeling, as I'm sure you mm -hmm. felt when you, because you were a student, and came back to work for TCU. Um, I, I remember the very first time I walked into the Bass Building. I, the Bass Building has a very distinctive smell, and I remember having that feeling of being a student all over again. So kind of that queasiness of, um, of, of being back in school as a student. And it just was so rewarding to sit on the other side of the office desk and be able to work with students and partner with them and lead them through the incredible journey of going to nursing school. So it was, um, it was great. It was, it was a wonderful opportunity for me to come and give back everything that I received when I was a student. And then you decided to go from nursing to alumni relations. What kind of precipitated that move? Well, as I said, I had been in the nursing program and then I had my daughter Phoebe um, in, in 2000. And really, as most young mothers do, struggled with you know, I want to be able to spend more time with my child. And, but I still wanted to stay at TCU. I loved the culture, the work culture. I loved the, the energy that I received from the students. So I was a little torn. And then I found this position in the alumni office. And at that time, it was part-time. And I was willing to leave my, my profession of nursing, so to speak, to do this because there are so many things that you use in nursing that I could use in in my my tenure in the alumni office. Certainly, um, teaching, uh, planning, um, working with the population that I did, which was primarily our our older alumni. A lot of them want the opportunity to be heard um, and be empathetic for the things they're going through in their lives. So some people might say, well, why would you want to leave the, the clinical setting of working in, in nursing and go and do something like event producing? They're very similar in a lot of ways. And the other thing that it afforded me by working part-time is I was able to take care of my parents. At that time in their lives, they were having some health 
difficulties. So we were able to um, easily bring them into our home and I was able to be their caregiver and navigate their uh, pretty extensive health care and be their advocate. So I, I've continued to use my nursing degree throughout my lifetime, even though it may not be in a hospital setting. Once you're a nurse, you're a nurse for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. And then we talked to, um, you talked about TC being a special place to be at, the energy there. What are some of your favorite memories working at TCU, whether it's a big event you help produce or just things that happen away from projects? Well, I have to say my most favorite aspect of TCU was our team. I mean, in the 21 years that I was in the alumni office, I was at TCU a total of 25 years when I retired. But of the 21 years that I was at TCU, when I retired in March of 22, I felt like we had the best team that we had ever had the whole time I'd been there. I just felt like we ran on, you know, we were just like cogs in a wheel. I mean, we just, you know, we just really worked well together. And so it, it's so important to be able to work with people that you really respect and you admire and you love. And I felt like it was a real family. And in a lot of ways, I think that you were to, if you were to ask a lot of other departments how they feel, they'd say, my, my coworkers are my family. Um, university advancement, our whole goal is to make our alums feel appreciated and valued. And I think that we did a good job of that. And so my memories of working with my coworkers, of course, you know, going to the bowl games and helping work with, with uh, my coworkers and, and greet our alums at our bowl game activities that, you know, especially the Alamo Bowl mm -hmm. that was in, in San Antonio that year. I guess what year was that? That would have been 16. January 16th. Yeah, I mean, that was incredible. That was incredible to be able to experience that. And then we talked about your professional pursuits um, and that you got your undergraduate degree from TCU in 1987, but you also used COVID as a launching point to get your master's degree. I did. Uh, while most people were finding their projects, we all remember our projects we did when we were sitting at home, figuring out what to do with the world shut down. Uh, Melissa was working eight, 18 hours a day getting her master's degree. So... Talk about the experience, one, from, you know, it was a few years after you got your undergraduate degree, but also it was in a much more virtual setting. Yes. So what did both of those aspects kind of help you appreciate what the current student experience is like at TCU? Okay, that's a great question, and it's, there's lots of layers to that. Um, I started my master's program a year before covid and when I entered, I entered into the MLA program, Master of Liberal Arts, which is an outstanding program. It's, it's very um, focused on the success and achievement of the working, working student, I believe, because there's a lot of flexibility. And my daughter, Phoebe, had just entered TCU as a freshman. So I felt like, you know what? It's my time. It's my time to focus my energies moving from a parent into more of an advisory role as a parent and not so much hands-on that I wanted to do something for me. I wanted to see, can I go back to school after 30 plus years um, of writing and taking the exam? So my very first class was philosophy in film and it was incredible. I mean, I remember how nervous I was and it was actually an in-class experience. Mm -hmm. And I told myself, you know, I'm going to just pace myself. I'm not in any time frame for getting this done. I'm going to just do it as I can. And I took one class a semester. Then COVID happened. And the last class I took actually was um, in December of 19 in person. And then in December, um, in January of 20, I was taking a virtual class anyway. Hmm. And I thought, you know what? I don't know how long this COVID thing is going to happen. Um, I had the flexibility of working from home and didn't have all the nights and weekends with having to do events as we do, mm -hmm. as you're familiar with that. So I decided to just add, increase my class time and did two classes per semester and was able to finish in, um, in May of 21. And it was incredible. I remember feeling much prouder of myself 
the day I received my diploma than I did when, with my undergraduate. Mm. And I think that was because as an older student, I was so proud that I was able to balance all the things and COVID. And I think when you graduate from your undergraduate, I think it's just kind of a pass, rite of passage. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just kind of like expected of you, yes. just kind of the natural right. order. Yes. And so I didn't really feel the achievement and accomplishment as a 21 year old, mm -hmm. as I did as a 50 something year old. It, it's funny you say that our producer and I were speaking on the way over about how, uh, um, obviously college is a different situation for every person. And there's a lot of families it's, um, and it rightfully is a very historic, um, you know, excitement when you graduate college of, of, you know, any, any degree. And then for some, as you say, it's kind of an extension of high school. So, right. So I think if you don't go through college a second time, you're able to better appreciate that. I was, and I, you know, I understand when you asked me, well, you know, did it help me to, to, to understand the student experience? Absolutely. I hadn't taken a test <laughs> since, well, my, my state boards, which would have been in 1987. So over 30 years had ever taken it. And there was only one professor in the graduate program that tested. <laughs> I won't say who it was because I want her to um, not have people not take her class. But to take an online test as a student, mm -hmm. the first couple of times I took it, my nerves really played games with me. Mm -hmm. And I did not do well. And that was very disappointing because that's not the kind of person or student I am. So it made me understand how stressed mm -hmm. students get yeah. and how it really Im uh, impacts your self-esteem. Mm -hmm. So that was a really good exercise for me mm -hmm. to learn that it's, it's hard for students. Mm -hmm. And they were, students are taking like four and five classes, mm -hmm. not just yeah. one class and having to juggle it all so and the whole managing deadlines about you could be um and for a working person at a conference in oklahoma and have to get your your paper in just at yes, midnight and you're right. not knowing if you can go out for dinner with your colleagues no, not I saying can't. that melissa was or was not able to go to dinner with her colleagues to finish her first paper but no i i <laughs> i i was a good student and passed on going out to dinner and went back yes. to my room i do remember that thank you i'd forgotten about that <laughs> yeah it was a uh it was a very memorable time um but as you said earlier, you retired from TCU in the spring of 22. Mm -hmm. And most people think she's a nurse. She's an event planner. She's probably, you know, she's a Fort Worth native. She stayed around here. No, Melissa, you decided to go all the way across the world, practically, to Agunquit, Maine. I did. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yes. Um, to help run an inn for half a year. So yeah. tell us how that happened and what that experience has been like. Okay, that's a great question. How do you go from um, retiring from uh, a, a higher education to uprooting yourself and moving to Maine. <laughs> so Agunquit, Maine, if you've never been there, it's beautiful. It's a very small town right on the ocean, um, about 40 minutes from Portland. I, my husband and I, Doug, have traveled to Agunquit to a particular bed and breakfast called the Trellis House for many years to get a break from the heat here to kind of, um, decompress and love it. And we loved the hospitality at this particular bed and breakfast. So jokingly, I would say every time we would go, if you ever need somebody to help you come and run your inn, I'm your gal. And they would laugh and that's kind of how we'd leave it. So when Phoebe, I knew Phoebe would be graduating in May of 22. And I was really thinking, I think it's time for me to consider retirement. Um, because one of the benefits, as you know, from being an employee is that your dependents receive their degree. So I had, I felt like I'd kind of just had finished my chap, that chapter. And I was in Maine in, um, October of 21 and I had a, the innkeepers really approached me and said, you know, you've said to us in the past that you'd be interested in helping us. And now that we have a new property we would really like to talk to you about that, making that happen. So we had a long discussion in January of 22 and they offered me the job and I had to do the hard decision of telling 
my staff that I would be retiring and that was that was difficult but it was an easy decision to make I I think as women we wear so many hats we're wives we're mothers we're caregivers we're civic volunteers we're employees we're employers we're 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 a lot of things to a lot of people and a lot of times women don't take the time to achieve their dreams. They're always trying to help other people achieve their dreams. Not that I'd ever had a dream of running a bed and breakfast, but hospitality is in my DNA. That's another gift that God gave me is the gift of hospitality. And so that's why my job at TCU worked so perfectly with my talents. So I thought, you know, why not? What's the worst that will happen? I'll retire. I'll go do this for a season. I'll hate it. I'll come home. And I had a long talk with my husband and my daughter, and they said, we want you to do what's going to make your heart just fill with joy. And so we agreed as a family that we would try this. And so I retired on a Friday, <laughs> got in my car on a Tuesday, drove to Maine in three days, and started work in April of 22 as a manager of a bed and breakfast and finished the season at the end of October, came home and slept for about three months and really reflected on my experience. And I loved, I loved every minute of it, but I will say in keeping is for people in their twenties. <laughs> it's exhausting, but I got so much joy out of meeting people all over the world who came to stay with us. I mean, how can you, how can you not love the fact that you're 150 yards from the ocean? Mm -hmm. It was gorgeous. So I'm going to go back. I'm leaving on Saturday to go back to Maine and I will be there until the end of October. Hmm. Is there anything, any advice you've learned from your first trip to Maine that you're going to definitely take for the second round? Um, you know, I think that when you do something for the first time, you tend to give it 110%. Mm -hmm. And I worked so hard that I didn't take time to really enjoy the fun aspects of living in a beach town. And I want to explore more of the area mm -hmm. um, and not exhaust myself to the point where I'm too tired to go explore the area. So I'm, I'm looking forward to finding a balance okay. between giving 100% of a great hospitality experience for our guests, but also being kind to myself mm -hmm. and finding time uh, to enjoy my surroundings. Mm -hmm. And for people that want to know some of the things that go on while Melissa's an innkeeper, um, writing is important to you and blogging. Um, and I know that you were hoping to obviously do more with your blog home with a twist to tell us about those things, but then, you know, working 20 hours a day, it doesn't necessarily l lend time to do that as you were hoping. Right. But when you do have time, um, tell us about your blog home with a twist. How did it get started? What are all the different areas you cover? Um, and you become quite accomplished in that area. Thank you. Um, so home with a twist is a love letter to my mother. It's everything that my mother taught me growing up. She was a very, she was a consummate hostess. Her goal, much like mine, is to make people feel special. And so she loved homekeeping, having a beautiful home, cooking, hospitality, graciousness. Um, holidays were always so special in our home, in our family. And I grew up pulling on her apron strings and watching her do all of these things, welcome people into our homes for all different kinds of events. In fact, um, growing up, my mother, my mother and dad were the first people to host the first in-home Young Life meeting. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I remember, and there's a huge age difference between my sister and my two brothers. Mm -hmm. My sister was 15 and my brothers were 11 and 12 when I was born. Okay. So I have a lot of memories kind of being on the peripheral of their um, growing up. Mm -hmm. But I do remember peeking into the big living room we had and it was just packed with youth that were there for a Young Life meeting. Wow. Um, my mother just effortlessly hosted Christmas morning breakfasts and 
Christmas Eve parties for anybody who didn't have a place to go. And I don't ever remember seeing her complain or even act like she was tired. I mean, she just did it because it just was something she loved to do. So my blog, Home with a Twist, is everything she taught me with my own modern spin as a modern woman now. With some of the challenges that maybe were different, um, you know, back then women didn't really have um, a partner that helped them with housework and raising the kids and, and cooking meals like many women have today, but we still have some of the same challenges. Mm -hmm. So that has been a lot of fun to um, share my stories, share, I sh also shared deeply personal things as a caregiver for my parents um, in hopes that maybe someone would read it and maybe realize that, okay, I'm feeling the same way too. You know, that's a normal way to feel. Mm -hmm. I've had some losses in my life, so I've shared my grief experiences. So it's been, it's really been a love letter to my mother, but also kind of like an open journal. Mm -hmm. So I share all, kind, all kinds of things from uh, the recipe for this yellow um, <laughs> cake with the chocolate frosting, which I know is one of your favorites. It's my birthday present every year. Yeah. Uh, so I'll share the, I'll share recipes on the blog, um, beauty, fashion, our travels. As you said, um, my my time in Maine. I try. I thought I was going to go with these big dreams of of blogging more, but as you said, I mean, I'm up at six in the morning and don't finish my day until six at night, and that's seven days a week. So. Um, but I do love to write. It's a great way to to capture my thoughts and my hopes and my dreams. And you're quite the social influencer. Well, yeah, um, I have um, I, I have a great Instagram account, Home with a Twist, where I, I you know reels. As you know, reels are kind of where it's at right now. If you want to attract new followers, so that's been fun. I've been spending a lot of time taking some classes on how to you know produce reels and content and track my analytics and um, so that's an extension of, of more deep dive writing that I do on my blog. Mm -hmm. um, and then when your schedule allows, um, you still are involved with the university. You've kind of uh, helped in an advising role with people at the university with your 50 year reunion. Mm -hmm. um, this is a very special um, experience for our, our uh, graduates when they get to come back for their 50 year reunion. It happens every May. Mm -hmm. um, so when it's your 50 year reunion, make sure you participate in that. Yeah. Um, but how do you think you've seen the university change from when you when you were a fresh when you were a transfer student coming onto campus from where it is today? Well, the student today is much different than the student back in my day, mm -hmm. and that is because of the opportunities and the information on the internet, and that you know news is happens and it's immediately broadcast. Mm -hmm. um, so the student today, I think, is much more intellectual. They're much more in tune to world opinions, world views. So I'm really excited about that. So I really, and I love the fact that TCU is, is really working and recognizes the need for the TCU community to mirror the community in our nation, in our world, with more diversity, more inclusion, um, you know, recognizing that we all can learn from each other and that we need all nationalities, all ethnicities, um, all identities. And so I, I would really like to, to see TCU continue to, to expand their, their student base so that all groups feel welcome, regardless of who you are or where you came from. And being a proud alum yourself, you mentioned that your daughter um, graduated recently from TCU. Yep. Um, how did it make you feel to pass on that horn frog legacy? Oh my gosh. If my parents were still here, they would just be so thrilled because my, my sister is a TCU horn frog. Her daughter is also a horn frog. I'm a horn frog twice over. Um, Phoebe uh, graduated in May of 22 with a degree in criminal justice. She was a senior scholar, uh, graduated magna cum laude. Um, so I am so just so happy for her and now she's pursuing her master's degree in criminal justice and she is uh, an employee at TCU she's working in the school edu of education as a college advising a member of the college advising corps so she's uh, the high school she chose to serve was North Crowley High School which was her high school and it's been a lot of fun for her to be on again on that side of being a TCU employee 
and helping students achieve their dreams of wanting to go to college. And she gets to be on the uh, both sides of it for both her high school and college because now she's Absolutely. advising students that were really, they're only about five years younger than her about yep. going to yep. TCU. So that's a... You, you and she keep... does a great job. And she was actually given a commendation in, uh, because um, they have 600 seniors that have to be, every senior needs FaceTime with a college advisor. Wow because their goal in the Crowley School District is to try to get a student to commit to college. Mm -hmm. If not college, at least um, a vocation that they're mm -hmm. passionate about. Mm -hmm. And she was one of the few college advisors who had FaceTimed with every single student wow. by the end of the semester. So. <laughs> wow, 600 kids. She must have be been keeping your hours of going from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Well, she's just, she works smart. <laughs> um, and with you being local, you're obviously able to be on campus a lot. So is there a favorite spot on campus you have, whether it's a former spot that's been renovated when you were an undergraduate student or maybe your current spot as it currently is today? I have always been a big fan of the library. Mm -hmm. Spent a lot of time there as a nursing student. I love the smell of the library. Now, it has been renovated since I was a student there. Um, many people remember the huge entrance mm -hmm. that was not probably very uh, mobility friendly very narrow very narrow very steep yes but my but the section that is still there that i spent a lot of my time studying and i don't know what they call it it might be the reference room yes or it's the room that has all of the old wooden library tables and the bookshelves yes. that has such a distinctive smell mm -hmm. smell of old books mm -hmm. And I was raised in a library. I mean, mm -hmm. my mother was a huge reader. And every summer she would say, I want you to make a bucket list of what you want to do this summer. And at the top of the list was go to the library, wow. check out books. So I still, even as an undergrad, I would go and sit in the library and read books and work on my homework and just sit in those creaky chairs. So, um, and the library works really hard. The librarians there are, are very helpful and resourceful. And I even used the library as, as a TCU employee. I would call and worked with an archivist there to be able to get um, photos and things that I could use for my programming. So huge. And I used it in my master's program to um, get research that I would do for my papers. So the library is my favorite place. Hmm. Well, whether it was a, a student or as an employee, was there a, a specific member of the TC community that you say had more of a profound impact on you and kind of helped make you who you are today? Yes, and I would say it wasn't a student and it wasn't an employee. It was my senior adult programming. The Quink Club, which is rhymes with wink, and it's spelled Q-U-I-N-Q, -Q, Quink, mm -hmm. was established in 1974. Um, by a group of alums who had just finished their 50th reunion. And they said, you know, we want more. We want to continue to come back just even past our 50th reunion. So they formed the Quink Club, which is Latin for more than 50. Mm. So that was one of my areas of responsibility was to help plan events for them. And I became very close to the Quink Club members over the year, over the 22 years, that, 21 years that I was in the office. Um, some names that people would know would be Jane Tecklenburg, um, Jane York, Pat and Paul Vinzant, um, so many, Dale Young, who's still very active in our Quink program. And the things I learned from them were, were valuable life lessons. Um, things like Jane said to me one day, you know what, when, we, when you host events, we would love for you just to sit with us. Just sit at our table during a program. Mm -hmm. We don't care what the color of the napkins look like or how the food is plated. We just want you to spend time with us. And I felt like, you know, that was a real, that was a great lesson that as an event producer, our alums want to get to know us and they really want us to spend time with them. They don't care about all the other things that we spend so much time and so much energy on. Um, and they just, they cared about me. They always would, they would call, they would send. I, when I retired, I had a huge banker's box full of cards and letters mm -hmm. that that age group would send me, especially mm -hmm. after a reunion. And they would say, thank you for all the work that you did. So I think that age group is what I learned from them 
is thankfulness, that it just takes five minutes to sit and write a card and tell someone thank you, mm -hmm. or to call and say thank you. I learned loyalty. I learned how important their alma mater was to them. It didn't matter the era, the decade, they had such cherished memories. Because you have to remember back in the Quaint Club era, students were, it was a living community and they lived on campus and very few left campus to go do things. They lived and worked in the community that they lived. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, they taught me a lot about just the spirit of being loyal and tradition. So those are all the values. And, and so that would be the, the group, my senior adults. What advice would you give an incoming freshman at TCU? Oh gosh. You know, when you're young, like our producer that's here today, it's so hard for them to understand and take wisdom from someone who's my age in their 50s. But I think what I would say is, if you got a huge room full of alums and you ask them, raise your hand if you're still working in the major that you pursued at TCU. How many hands do you think would still go up? Not many. So don't, don't put yourself into a silo thinking that you have to do whatever it is you pursued at TCU for the rest of your life. You have a long, hopefully if you take good care of yourself, you have a long life ahead of you. It is totally okay to change your mind. Even a couple of years after you graduate, if that, pers if that major and that job you have does not fill your heart with joy, that there are so many other options in life, um, don't give up. The, the main thing is find a mentor. Find connections. If that person doesn't know someone in the industry you're interested in, ask them to find someone. Use LinkedIn. I mean, we have so many resources at our, at our hands right now. The other great resource is the Career Center at TCU that is available to you as, a, as, a, as a, an alum for the rest of your life. My advice would be it's okay to change your mind, and it's not going to be the end of the world. It might actually be the best thing you've ever done. So that would be my advice. And we will wrap it up with this. Melissa, if you were, say, chancellor for a day, mm. I know that's very, I mean, you were an innkeeper, so I mean, that's probably Gosh, just the next yeah, step in your career. Some similarities there. I think you could do it. Well, how would you set the path for TC to grow in its next 150 years? I think it's really important to understand the student of today. And you have to be, you, you can't be in your office the whole day. You have to be going to classes. You have to be continuously learning, um, meeting students. You have to spend time looking at the environment and living in it and going to conferences and meeting other universities and hear what their challenges are. Because probably our challenges are all the same. Um, but I think what's been a success for me to continue to evolve is constantly learning and exposing yourself to what's out there. Well, thank you so much for Melissa. Thank you so much for uh, you yeah. and your dog, Hazel. Hazel. <laughs> Hazel has sat here perfectly through this whole interview and has not barked at all. So you thank you for both of you welcoming us into your thank home. You. It's such an honor to have you here. Thank you all for, for being in my home with me today. And uh, be sure to follow me at Home with a Twist or come see me in a gunkwit at thebluesshuttersin.com. Thank you very much, and we will see you all again next time.